Support for Living and Learning with Disabilities comes from Living Innovations, providing support for people with developmental disabilities to have a good life at home and in the community. Services include community connections, which facilitates employment, skill development, and community integration to maximize each individual's well-being and independence. For more information or to learn about job opportunities for compassionate people wishing to do meaningful work, visit livinginnovations.com. And by the Natural Care Wellness Center, which has been serving the New Hampshire and Maine Seacoast for 22 years. Our goal is to encourage a healthy lifestyle through education, wellness choices, and hands-on healing. Natural Care Wellness Center offers gentle force chiropractic, family and child wellness, chiropractic acupuncture, holistic nutrition, nutrition response testing, a decompression table, therapeutic exercise, whole food supplements, neuroemotional techniques, and massage therapy. Welcome to Chloe's Shred Shed. I started this small business because I love shredding. I am proud to provide a valuable service in my local community. Being an entrepreneur made it possible for me to keep working during the pandemic. I like working and having a purpose. we miss all those wonderful qualities that we just listed in that last song because we decide who people are before we even get to know them based on maybe what they look like how they talk what kind of clothes they're wearing what kind of music they like whatever we decide who they are before we ever get to know who they really are inside and it happens to us too sometimes people decide who we are before they know us I think all we really want is just for, for people to see us for who we really are. See me beautiful, look for the best in me It's what I really am and all I want to be It may take some time, it may be hard to find But see me beautiful See me beautiful each and every day Could you take a chance? Could you find a way to see me shining through in everything I do and see me beautiful? For the best in me It's what I really am And all I want to be It may take some time It may be hard to find But see me beautiful See me beautiful Each and every day Could you take a chance Could you find a way To see me shining through in everything I do and see me beautiful. Thank you. 
Allison Decker. Welcome, everybody. I never get tired of our introduction, Danielle, Wendy, John. Beautiful. Um, the subject today is uh, is we're going to be talking about autism, and I and here's a very important distinction. And I learned this because I used to work with somebody with, uh, who had autism. You're not autistic. You have autism. It doesn't define who you are. Very important distinction. So if you have, and you're out in public or you're meeting friends, and make sure you don't fall into that verbal trap. That uh, could be very harmful to somebody and hurt their feelings. You know, uh, like I'm, I'm losing my hair, but I'm not bald. You know, I'm still Ronnie. You know. So I, you would fend me, you know, and John, John's actually worse. He's further down the baldness road than I am. He's really, he's almost at the end of the road. There you go. Take off that. You know. But, you know. So uh, what I want to start with is uh, Wendy and Danielle. Danielle is our guest today. And uh, give us a definition of autism. Either one. Um, uh, for me, um, autism means to me, and like you just said, you when we learned it in New Hampshire leadership, you want to use people first language, which means you put, which means when I introduce myself, I will always say my name is Danielle, I, and I have autism. I never use autism. I never introduce myself with the. I never say the autism first. The other thing you had said was it's a PCU. That is one of the reasons that autism ha uses the puzzle piece for their symbol to symbolize that autism, we were made up like a puzzle. Autism is a PCU, but it is not the whole thing. There are, you can do anything. People with autism can do everything anybody else can do. Autism is just a PCU. Thank you. And I think yeah. you can do things that uh, other people can't. Uh, the right. fellow that I worked with for many, many years, uh, he had this unique talent of, uh, I remember he was making his supper and I was staying overnight at his house. That's what he was, a caregiver. And I said, I'm not going to say his name. I'm going to use a phony name. I'm going to say, Bob, what is the day of the week uh, what what is uh, Tuesday? Uh, what day of the what is uh, if I give you I would give him a date on the calendar like in twenty twenty five. Uh, what uh, what day of the week is Tuesday on or something today or something? And he would be able to look far into the future, not even stop making his food, and give me give me dates and what day of the week it was. Every in. Something incredibly hmm. uh, had a disability was ridiculous. He had talents far beyond ninety nine point nine on the globe. You know. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. That's I got my speech out of the way, but I want to get back to how you two met. Yeah. Well, I met Danielle when I did the um, New Hampshire University of New Hampshire Institute on Disabilities program, a leadership. And when I met Danielle for the first time, she was um, just a lot of questions, but shy. And the story I always tell, because it just blows my mind, is we had to stay in um, at the Holiday Inn during our sessions because they would be on the weekends. And Danielle must have put her hand up in the back <laughs> probably about four times, asking little questions about being away. What was it like? What did she need to bring? Because, you know, then you, you listen. And she had never been away from home before in her life. And it was a scary situation. And it wasn't just Danielle. There were a couple of other people, too. But it was really interesting to me. And it was a great introduction to 
again, taking time and really listening and learning how others feel. Um, Danielle has taught me a tremendous amount about patience, about understanding, about, um, you know, loving people for, for who they are. It's not the disabilities, it's the abilities. She's absolutely amazing. And within the, well, when did we graduate? 70, I mean, uh, 75, yeah. <laughs> 2017, I believe, or 18. The accomplishments that this girl has done. That's why I was really adamant about getting her on the show because she's a whole different person. So just self-assured and wonderful. And Danielle, why don't you tell all your, your gifts? So... Um, well, one gift that I've that since the pandemic, I've actually become really good at is I will look I can look at pictures of like Disney characters on Google or anything like that and actually copy them in pencil and, and then do and then trace over the line in Sharpie and color them in. And I've given a few of them as gifts and they come out really good. Like I've done Mario characters a few times. My mom got one that was princess stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I also have done a lot. I I'm about to complete my um, college. I'm about to graduate college next year. I have one more class, and then I'll be able to graduate next summer with the rest of the with the rest of the class. Provided we're actually going to be doing graduations, um, I am working um, almost full time at a childcare center in Nashua called Kindercare. It's a great facility, great people. Anybody looking for job as a teacher i'd recommend the place it's great um i have been to washington dc i've been to um i've done that i've done that one twice i've helped out with a bill for all health care for adults with disabilities um yeah so you certainly can have. you tell me uh can you tell everyone what it was like growing up? Can you go back to the early years? Yes. Um, what it was yeah. like? Yeah, I can. Um, so I am the oldest of, I can do the, I believe I'm up to the oldest of 18 um, cousins. I'm the oldest in my family with two brothers, my mom and my dad. Uh, so I'm the, and the oldest grandchild as well. So I have all that. And then I have like, a, I have a ton of aunts, uncles, everybody in my family though has always supported me with my, with my disability. No one has ever put, put me down or said, you can't do something. They have always supported me with whatever I've wanted to do. My parents, I have to say, are probably my biggest cheerleaders, no matter what I do, they're right behind me. They've never said you can't do something. They just say, you know, you can try and whatever we need to do to help you, we're going to help you. Um, uh, yeah, that's, but yeah, my family, I mean, has always been my biggest supporters for sure. But, but go ahead, Wendy. No, I was just going to ask about in school, can I you? Uh -huh. you know, just your, um, yeah, your experiences in the public schools and, and things that you've no, actually changed. Hold, so, hold yeah. that thought. Hold that thought for a second, Daniel. I want to get back a little earlier. Like uh -huh. I realized that I was different because I'm legally blind in my right eye. And okay. I didn't, but there was a time when I was so young that I didn't know that. I thought everybody couldn't see out of their right eye. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, no, it's just me that has that. But when did you realize that you were different from other kids? I mean, because I think that's universal. Um, that for me, we all see as ourselves I as feel, different. I do feel like it happened for me a little bit later in life because my parents never made it a big deal. So to them, I was, I did things differently, but I wasn't any different than anybody else. You went to so, regular school? You went to regular school? I went to school? regular, yep. Yeah. So I had, I did have, um, my biggest thing when I was a child was behavioral more than anything. I had a lot of outbursts that at times could last for significant periods, could get very violent. So that was my biggest thing from when I was younger, right up through my teenage years, like all the way through. Um, that was probably the hardest things on my parents was my behavioral stuff. What would, what would trigger that? What would trigger that kind of behavior? 
different. It could be different because of the bipolar that goes along with the autism. It could be different depending on the day. I could be, I have what's called manic bipolar that goes with the autism. So that manic bipolar is basically a roller coaster, which means throughout your day, you can have extreme highs and lows throughout the whole day. And you never know what could set it off. Where are you, where are you right now on that roller coaster? Brad, the second. Um, as of right now, I haven't had as many lows in a long time. I'm actually been a lot more of the, I've been a lot more highs and it's, since I've moved out of my family's house and as I've had the independence, it's been, it's gone a lot better. So. When, Wendy and Danielle, this could be a stupid question, but um, no, no stupid is, question. Um, is there any, um, <laughs> you, you don't know me that well, Danielle. Before <laughs> the show is ending, I'm gonna ask you a really totally stupid question. And then if you press on your keyboard, it has a slap thing. It'll slap me right in the face. You, know? you can just. <laughs> That's fun. So, um, so uh, is 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 there any connection between bipolar, manic depressive, depression, and autism, or is that just totally another? So another something that that's you have. That's a good question. So what it is is it's, you think it's like an umbrella. So basically, the autism is the top of the umbrella. And underneath it, you have all the so there's underneath it like you have the ADHD, you have your bipolar, you have your anxiety, and your OCD. In all of those, it's what makes up the autism. That's why a lot of people are misdiagnosed because people will be diagnosed with ADHD or bipolar. And later in life, the, the, the doctors realize, oh, wait, they don't have just that. It's autism. Wow. And I so what, and they have actually redefined what autism is actually now called autism spectrum disorder. And that's because autism is technically considered a spectrum. It's on the spectrum, meaning there are different what different um, levels of autism. So for me, I'm what you would call high functioning autism, also known as Asperger's. But there's also um, like I have a friend who isn't as isn't at the same level as me, but he still has autism. So that's what I find is think is really cool about autism is there are different levels and people can have autism and have different levels. I know some who don't even have who won't talk or anything. So it's all a matter of the, where you fall on that spectrum. And I just want to chime in there because when we first met and we were doing our introduction and everybody was going around saying who they were and what, why they were there. I kept hearing this on the spectrum, on the spectrum. And I was like, what the heck? Because we don't all know the, the speak and, and we don't also know how things have changed. Like from when I was learning about people with special needs or, or disabilities. I mean, that was a whole different generation. So for me to sit there and have you guys talking about yourself, you know, you, Forrest, um, Alex, and a couple of other people, and everybody was different, but they're all saying, I'm on the spectrum, on the spectrum. I had to raise my hand and say, what the heck is this spectrum? Because it wasn't something normal in my speak. It wasn't something I was aware of. So again, I learned so much through that program. And for you right now to sit here and to tell our audience what it is, because I know there is others out there scratching their head. What is the spectrum? I thought it was autism. I thought it was Asperger's we didn't realize, and thank you so very much for explaining the, that the umbrella effect. Right. Because without that- Yeah, you did that. You explained that very eloquently. You sure did. Thanks. So can I tell you one quick story? Uh, sure. uh, uh, just uh, when, it, again, when I worked with this fellow, I had a wonderful time. It was, I would stay over weekends with him. Um, and uh, we had this incident where, um, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he was a, he was really someone you could set your clock by. He would get out and take walks, um, maybe get get a get a soda or something, and then he would come back at a certain time and he'd eat at a certain time. So he's very in the weekends where he wasn't in a day program. He he you could set your clock by what he did. He was a person of habits, 
And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, um, he goes into the convenience store nearby, goes up to, a, uh, you know how you'd go into a store and you see a big char, a, a jar, and it would be people would put dollars in it for charity, oh. for whatever. <laughs> and he, would, he went up to the store right in front of the cashier, took the lid off, reached in, and took some money out, right out of it. And they didn't know what to do. And they warned him a couple of times. And finally, we met at the house. Um, a police officer came over. The mother was there. I was there. And they said, we're pulling her hair out. We don't know why X is, is doing this. He's never done it before. And I said, for first of all, he's not a thief. I leave my wallet and my money in the, the room I stayed in when I was there. He's never taken a dime from me. And he's never done that. And so the, 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 to get to the chase, what actually happened was that he had his mother would put money in different envelopes for him. And he had the money for his prescription. He would go to the local drugstore and then he would use the money for prescription. Well, I said, wait a minute. I said, did, and sure enough, the problem was the prescription cost went up. He couldn't take money from another envelope. That was forbidden. So he just grabbed some out of, out of the jar on the counter. I started with the premise is he's not a, uh, some cat burglar or a thief. I started with the premise there's something wrong. This routine has been disrupted. But I did, but went there first. Otherwise, they just didn't know what to do. They had no clue. Sorry, I mean, that's, a, but it just reminds me of that story. Hmm. Right. So have you ever gotten misunderstood? Have you ever, you, you, um, go ahead, John, go ahead. I, are you, I, one of the things that I used to do when I was a school teacher, um, I had a gifted and talented program in a school. And when you think about that, this was a, a middle grades, grades seven through 12, actually. Um, but what I found out, I did that program for about nine years. And during that time, I often found students who would come to my gifted and talented program that other teachers said, what do I, what are they doing in a gifted and talented program? They, they don't do anything in my class. Um, they don't perform well, they misbehave. Why are you taking them down into the gifted and talented room? It turned out that a number of these kids had Asperger's syndrome and in the classroom, they didn't function well, but when they were in a, in the, uh, the gifted and talented room with me, we would pick out a project that they were interested in. And oftentimes it had to do with electronics, uh, video, uh, some sort of communication thing that was surprised me. Uh, a lot of them were interested in getting their ham radio license, which I thought was interesting. But if they were working with their hands, soldering a board, putting together a kit, I had no problem with them. They loved it and they couldn't wait to get down there. And I sort of used it as a reward. I said, well, you know, if you can uh, take, do well in class today, I said, you can come down tomorrow, you know, again. But the teachers wouldn't let them out of class if they, you know, were a real problem. So actually it helped them. And I even have a couple of the students that I worked with, and we're, we're talking now 17 years ago. Every once in a while, I'll hear from them on Facebook. Uh, and and um, Ms. Terrell, you were the best teacher I ever had. And it was it's just amazing to me that they weren't able to function in a classroom, but they were highly intelligent. You give them the right pathway, and they'd take off. So I want to say that. <laughs> So I know you want to talk about, you have your issues. I'm going to let, let when do you talk here? What do you, what do no, you want to do No, I was just here? going to say that Danielle, as she was talking about her drawing, she's very creative, made just, just naturally, just beautiful color schemes and a lot of glitter and. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to put up some of the drawings, John? And we have drawings to put up? I wish that I had thought to do that. 
Well, you can send them to John. I can do them later. Yeah, I have some beautiful cards that she's made me. And yeah, she's very thoughtful, very just, a uh, just wonderful, wonderful person. One Is that possible, my- John? Can you take, uh, she takes a photo of them on her phone and send them to you? Can we get some of those up or maybe, that? No, maybe one of the ones you just were working on. But you're so good with that. <laughs> you really are. <laughs> what else would you like to talk about? So um, I know he had mentioned school. Yeah. Um, I So in school, elementary school was rough. I mean, um, I didn't get put into special ed until I was probably in like fifth grade. And um, I really don't know why they waited to so long. Um, there were certain subjects I was better at than others. Math, just I've never been able to get a hold of math. And as I went on in school, math just became a lot harder. Um, algebra, I don't think I ever did actually take algebra because it was just too, too much to, to do the numbers and letters. And it was just a lot. Um, as far as math, I can do adding, subtracting, multiplication. I can do in very simple division, not like anything more than two numbers. I can only do like one number division, <laughs> but, um, I know how to use a calculator. So that helps me when I'm doing my math a lot of times. Um, I can, I do pretty good with reading my writing. I have no, I noticed like sometimes I will get my B's and my D's mixed up or in, in the direction they're going. Um, cause autism is also what you would consider a learning disability. And so I do have that in there as well. But I, as when I said, because I'm creative, I love to write, just write stories, be creative about it. Um, I love science, anything hands-on. So that's why when I got to middle school and I finally started being able to pick my own classes, that was really interesting for me because I could do because I got to do wood shop. Blueprints for America was really cool. I did computer classes, which is where I found out I'm really good technic with like computer stuff. Um, I did a lot of the cooking. The whole Mac was awesome. I even did an after school like school class called food and fun around the world, um, which I really liked. So that was really cool. I, um, I like the hands on stuff when I, and then when I got to high school, that's when I found my passion for teaching, um, which, well, actually, no, that was in middle school because we had to do job shadow and I job shadowed my third grade teacher, Mrs. Goulet. And when I did that, after I did that, I realized well, I realized that the reason I want to be a teacher is because because she had because she was the one person in elementary school where I remember the things the themes that we learned about Beatrix Potter. Um, we learned about the Nanooka Indians. We learned about Little House on the Prairie, and just I remember vividly learning these things. And that was the only class in elementary school I remember that. So to me, that was, I, I kept thinking in my head, why is that the only class I remember? It was the way she taught us. And she let, like, she would give us choices on projects. She'd give us a list and we could choose how we did our projects. And she did a lot more of what we learned in our, in our uh, leadership program, which was inclusive education. Mm-hmm. So for me, and for those of you who don't know, inclusive education basically means you change how you're teaching in the class. You don't try to change the student. So for example, if you have a child in the wheelchair and you guys are planning to go to like a, to go to the apple orchard, if that person can't, isn't able to go because the wheelchair isn't gonna, it's not gonna be accommodated for the wheelchairs and no one should be able to go. That's what we mean by inclusive education. Everybody needs to, we need to find a way for everyone to be included, not just some. So, um, but yeah, that's when I learned that I wanted to be a teacher. And um, as um, as I went, I got to do the early childhood programs in high school. That was a lot of fun. What and then so, a lot more hands-on classes. And I just, but like gym was always an issue. I was never physically um, inclined, like I don't know if inclined is the right word, but able to do a lot of the stuff that the other kids did because. I was short. And so a lot of times when they play the group games, I had trouble or I'd have trouble following what they needed me to do. But oh, I mean, overall, I was a good student. 
The fact that I didn't have many friends in high school or junior high worked to my advantage because I was able to get on a roll a lot because I was so focused on my schoolwork. So, yeah. You know, there was another- On a roll, that's very impressive. No. Remember um, this, when you were doing the Plus, um, Cut Plus and Company or whatever it was called? Plus Company, yeah. I always thought that that one um, aspect where when you were trying to get out on your own and, and your own apartment and all, and where they taught you about um, looking at the newspaper and how to count and your receipts and all that, yeah. that just seemed like such a great tool that you Yeah, so Plus Company helped me a lot earlier on. We did a lot where they would show us, um, that it was called money management and they taught you how to look at a receipt like they talked about tips on how to save money here or there, which was cool. Um, yeah, just all that stuff. Um, I really enjoyed all of it. So, yeah. And then, um, and then, I mean, I'm with the Astro Center now. They're good too. So, yeah. Awesome. So I'm not telling you where guys to go, you and Wendy and Danielle, but you, you do want to talk about your why did you end up going to Washington D.C. and all of that? So yes. We don't we so sure we get that in. Right. Yes. So I ended up going to Washington D.C. because I realized there was a um, problem in our, um, not just our state, but the whole United States was having a problem with getting dental care for adult, getting de dental funding for adults with disabilities. And um, so I worked really hard. I went to hearings. I went to Washington, D.C. twice. I talked to Senator Maggie Hassan. Um, we talked to people who worked for Gene Shaheen and people who worked for Ann Custer to tell them how we felt about that upcoming bill for the um, dental funding for adults with disabilities. And after a lot of work, it did end up going through. Yep, sure did. Yep. Hey. Hey, look at so, you. Look and then, at you. I know. do you know that right now have something to do with it? It is up for renew again, I believe. Wendy would know more about that than I would, but I believe it's actually, up for renew again. It's actually um, in the budget, and all that's kind of being worked on now is trying to find out what, how much of the funding needs to go into it. But the governor's yeah. all for it. It's gone through the House. It's gone through the Senate. Yeah. Yeah. We're in good shape. And if I remember the first time, it had to go to the governor a few different times because it took him a while to actually get on board with our particular right. plan. But as far as Danielle having um, a part of that, absolutely. It, it was one of the things when we were in leadership, that was her main goal that she spoke it a was. lot about was getting that. That was what she wanted to do. And, and um, with the help of Abel and Lisa, who's been on the show before, excuse me, setting all that up, Danielle and, and um, Forrest, Lisa's son, went to Washington to speak in advocacy and they were fantastic. And that way, I mean, that's a lot of people, that's the nation, everybody's there of some sort to talk about this and, and why it's so important. And um, testifying at hearings, we all did that, and mm -hmm. very instrumental in really keeping the the momentum and keeping things going. I'm real proud of her. You did it. I yeah. mentioned this. We always get together for the general public out there. We always get together and talk amongst ourselves before we go on the air. And I mentioned the fact that one of the shows we had were two dentists talking about. This is the issue that be an example. They said when we sometimes when we examine somebody's mouth beyond filling cavities or, or problems like that or root canals, we see something that indicates like an early uh, sign of cancer. Mm -hmm. And he said we've actually been able because they got in to see the dentist. They came in for the dental checkup and they listed a number of illnesses, some life-threatening, that show up in the mouth and, and that they are trained to see, the dentist is trained to see them uh, during your visit. And so, I mean, it's just pure ignorance just to see, think this is all about just filling a cavity or extracting a tooth. 
this is almost like one of your first lines of defense against diseases that would actually cause the state an exorbitant amount of money for people with disabilities that could be prevented. John's got his hand up. You're muted. Mute. You're muted, John. You're muted. Okay. John's not um, good with the technical stuff. We have to coach him with that. Yeah, that's right. Um, I uh, I just want to tell you that about the technical thing, we're having problems with your audio and and your video. Sometimes you've disappeared and uh, other times you freeze. So, but there's nothing you can do. That's the internet. Um, so it's not you, but uh, that's what's going on anyway. So I want you to know that. Um, right now, right now you're looking good. Take a quick picture of that, everybody. All right. Um, the I just wanted to tell you that um, yeah. the the value of the uh, dental work. Um, I have a aortic valve implant, and um, last uh, week, last Thursday, I went to um, Leahy Clinic in Burlington and had a meeting with my cardiologist. And the first question he asked me was. Uh, you're going to periodontal work every three months, right? And I said, yes. And um, periodontal work is when they go down in, in near your gums and they scrape out all the plaque where the bacteria tends to collect. Now, it turns out that, that the, the plaque, the bacteria in that plaque um, is highly uh, attracted to your heart. And if you have an artificial valve, it collects on that valve and it causes what, what they call endocarditis. Um, and that's an infection in the heart and it's very hard to stop and you can die from it pretty easily. So the, the insurance companies, had a periodontal treatment is around $300 every three months. And uh, when you have insurance that's maybe a thousand dollars, if you're lucky, or five hundred a year. That's gone in two, two periodontal treatments. Um, but the what you said, Ronnie, um, the insurance company, uh, which that which I have, uh, happens to be Blue Cross. Last year, they went into a new program. If you have coronary disease or heart disease of any kind, they now do not subtract the periodontal cost from your, in, your insurance, because they know exactly what you said. The cost of going into the hospital with sepsis or an infection that you could be in the hospital for two or three weeks um, is far higher than $300 every three months um, to, to make sure that you don't do that. But it's so important that they change their whole plan to get other people, everybody to and certainly it should be people that have disabilities as well. So that's right. On I have time. another question for Danielle, but what I want to say is even that logic is flawed because you, you may not know that you have, it's not like you, you don't, you, sh you don't have to be, you shouldn't have to prove that you have a heart condition to get the dental waiver because the dental waiver could pick up the dental exam could pick up early, early signs that there's a problem before it shows up in any other test. So the whole logic is extremely flawed. But Danielle, when you brought up dental, uh, were you having trouble with, with uh, your, your uh, dental issues? Were you having dental issues? Or was it just an so average? For example? me, my biggest thing is like, I've had to get a few crowns. I've had and cavities filled. The problem always with that is because you never had insurance to help pay for those things, it's a lot more expensive. And people with disabilities, they don't make a lot of money. So that's why that's a challenge for people with disability. It's not because it's harder because the thing the te the thing is, if you can work if you're working full time, you're gonna end up losing your all your benefits, which means you which means then your money's going towards doctors and all that stuff too. So you a lot of times don't have the money to pay for getting all this dental stuff done. So it's such twisted thinking, Danielle. It Don't is. You think it's twisted thinking. I've always said you the same thing. I feel like a lot of so times our government care and being more of yeah. a burden on the state. You know, I really feel like the government twisted. wants to give the money to the people who already make enough that they could cover themselves. And yet we as people with disabilities 
uh, left by the wayside with not with nothing. Yeah, every time we think we we're out of the dark ages, we realize that it's no. still pretty dark out there, and we shouldn't. Oh yeah, no, fight that shouldn't have to be made. Yeah, even it's though we got the dental, it doesn't mean yeah. made is so stupid. Yeah. Even though we got this dental under control, there is still so many other issues out there that we need to work on. I mean, the Section 8 wait list, that's one of my heart. That has always been one that I've always been like, it's a joke because I feel like the, that moves at a snail's pace. I mean, right now we just found out. Explain I'm what on, Section 8 is. Right. So Section 8 is, for, is, a, is when you get, a, is you get a voucher so you can get help with housing for paying rent so right now we just pulled recently they are on 2012 i applied in 2019 which means i'm still way down on that list even though it doesn't seem like it by the years that's still a long ways down so yeah you can you can have gray hair and be in a rocking chair before before you get help with that see Mm -hmm. That's pathetic. It's a that's a tough tough right. uh, climb. Aaron yeah. is on the section eight too, and it, it is, and it's, it's very hard, and especially just now. I mean, housing is a whole, a whole other ball game. Oh, New Hampshire awful. affordable housing, I should say. Mm-hmm. You know, and then put it in with people who really need the help, or say, in Aaron's instance, she needed to have a um, handicapped or wheelchair accessible apartment. They don't make a lot of them out of the whole big unit that Aaron was in. It was an old mill that they redid. There were only about four apartments that were handicap accessible. Um, as far as the counters were lower, the the doorways were wider. You know, she could maneuver into the shower. But think of the people that are out there that are in in wheelchairs or using walkers and really need that. You know, a lot of times housing will come up, but it's not accessible. So there's so many, again, like the dental with the housing, there's just so many avenues that really need to be. And as housing. you say about housing, the what's going on with housing is incredibly, housing on the seacoast, for example, is incredibly expensive. I get it. I was, about uh, it. I, was, I was explaining to, I was talking with my wife that we bought this house. We're in maybe... Uh, Oh God! Seven years ago, I'm not sure. Urging my my uh, daughter and her family, we're in the grandparents' place. We can never afford this house now. It's almost doubled in that kind yeah. of period. It, it's so, so housing is just going to continue to be a really wor- wor- worsening issue here. Right, right, and in especially meantime, for people with disabilities. Right, Often those charged. wait lists get longer. People wait, you know, and it. Uh, it just snowballs. And just like our last guest we had on with our place, there's another reason Lori is trying right. to get that done. But um, Danielle, what about the other one that I know Kelly and you both were working on was um, transportation. So that did not get very far. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No. To hear that. Unfortunately. But that, but that is another being in a city and we're mm. lying on the bus. Yeah. So yeah, but, I don't uh, go there. But um, I did want to touch on. No, like, I want us to get to Washington. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Danielle, what was it you wanted? No, I was thinking about oh. Washington D.C. Oh. oh, so like I said, I went to D.C. Um, and I I went to the Hill to talk to Senator Maggie Hassan. We talked to the people who work for Gene Shaheen. And Ann Custard about the bill, about and to tell them that we we need this to go through, and here's why. Did it go through? What was the result of that? Did it go through? Yes, it did. Did it pass? It did go through. Yeah, yeah. John, you have a picture of Danielle at the podium talking in Washington. It'll be a good time to show that. And how did they treat you? How did these? uh, how did the officials treat you personally, Danielle? They were great. They were grateful that um, I was. They were grateful that I. They that one of their constitu- constitu- constituents was there to um, tell them how they felt about a bill. Because right. the thing you have to remember is when you're talking to these people about 
how, about the these bills and how you feel about them, they they will listen because they want you to vote for them. And so that you have to remember that, you know, you technically have the power with that. If they're not willing to listen, then they're going to have to realize that you will not vote for them that the next time. I actually ran into a situation during leadership where we had to call our legislative. One of them I had, and I tried to call one of them and she was very rude to me. <clears throat> I did not vote for her the next go around because she was rude to me when I was talking to her on the phone. I think that's the next picture there that I sent you is, um, yeah. oh, that we are. this was when we were in leadership and we did our day of going to the LOB, which is a legislative um, yeah. uh, building. And we had to invite our senators and representatives to come. And we did mock hearings where mm -hmm. they- Very terrifying. Uh, well, but it was a great, great way of learning. And this is the day that I decided that I needed to be uh, a mm. little later. <laughs> I needed to get in there, but it was a wonderful experience. And there's my guys. We had a good time. Yes, we did. The fellow in the middle. Who's the fellow? That in the is for that's Forrest. Um, Lisa, Lisa B's son. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, someday I'd like to get him on too, if that's all right with everyone. Sure. But what was it you wanted to touch on, Danielle? What so when I well, so this first of all, I'll tell you, this picture was taken, I believe, two years ago. This is me and my second cousin Owen. He was like two years old when this. He might have only been one. It might have been, yeah, two years ago. He's now three years old. He's a mm -hmm. kitty. He, yeah, he's changed so much. He looks so much like his mother now. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, what I wanted to touch upon was when I was, um, from the time I was 13, uh, so I went through so many different specialists as far as psychiatrists and therapists. And then we finally found the two that worked the best was one we had in um, bought, uh, Mass General. Uh, she started at Mass General, moved over to the, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Waukee building in Mass General. So it's basically where a lot of the cancer patients yep. go. So she, so we moved, so her name was Janet Wisniak and she was a child psychiatrist and she did, I really thought she was a really good psychiatrist. The only challenge was transportation as always, but um, it was, we, I thought she was really good. The other person I owe a lot of gratitude to is my therapist that I've had, that I had from the age of 13 to 21. Her name was Fran Gagne. And she um, facilitated a program called YAP, which was called, which stands for Young Adult Program. She had two other people that facilitated with her for in the beginning it was karen richardson and she left early on um and then we had some others off and on the other one we had was paul lassens and he was awesome too but the three of them were it was just a really great program they teach you work ethic by um in this because in the summer if you volunteer on this farm at elvern farm in hudson for an hour you can you get to go on a field trip on friday and that could be somewhere like canopy lake water country like all you have to do is volunteer on the farm. There were a lot of clients who would put up a fight about it. And I'm like, why are you fighting? You have all you're doing is working for an hour and then you get to go have fun on Friday. I mean, and I mean, I always, I don't think I missed any of the trips, but it was a good opportunity to learn with work ethic. There was a lot of, she taught me DBT skills, which are skills used when you're, um, when you're upset or ha or like ha or when you're having or when your behaviors start getting coming out then then that's when you use dbt skills at the time i didn't think they were useful didn't want to use them now that i'm grown up i am grateful she taught them to me because i have learned to use a lot more of them than i used to i also liked when they did the music therapy they did cooking I had a lot of fears as a child that they helped me overcome as far as using the stove, the oven, a lot of that stuff. Danielle, what are, what, what are what, some of the um, tools that you use now when you need to calm down that you weren't crazy about as a kid? So they did stress balls, but what I use instead of stress balls is my favorite thing is my stuffed animal. 
I have a cat from Build-A-Bear and I will like stroke her arm or something. It's my favorite thing in the world to use. Yeah. That, yeah, I love those. Those are like my favorite. Those are my, those work way better than stress um, relievers. Yeah. I mean, then um, stress balls. The other thing about autism is that people with autism, their sensory is heightened. So a lo- particularly like for me, when I, I can't, eat certain foods because of texture. Watermelon is one, pepper, because of the spongy texture. Watermelon is too coarse. Pineapple is coarse and I won't eat that either. Also, there's certain clothes that I can't have touching my skin, like tulle, taffeta, anything like that. I'll start itching and I'll get like a rash. So, and then the only other one that I've had a hard time with for a while is is, uh, loud noises. Noises, right. And for me, for, I think throughout my whole school year, up to probably the last year of high school, fire drills, biggest anxiety producer. I just, I had a hard time with them. That was my hardest thing. Hmm. So. And you love to sing. Yes, I love to sing. And karaoke. She always yeah. does karaoke stuff. Yeah. Sing and dance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I am also for New Hampshire leadership. I didn't tell you guys this. When I graduated New Hampshire leadership, one of my roles once I graduated was I'm in charge of planning the gatherings for us all to stay together. So I've done a few different ones. We did a holiday party, which I thought turned out really well. We got a big turnout. I think we may have had like one, maybe two people that didn't show up. That went really well. And then um, we did camping. We went camping. Yep. Two years. Couldn't do it. We, last the only time. thing we realized was location. We thought we were going to choose different next time because we ended up going on a weekend that was raining and we ended up getting like drenched. Our tents were soaked. <laughs> so, uh, my, I mean, my pillow, everything had to be like hung out to dry the next day. It was so bad. But we all we all got through it. We <laughs> laughed. Oh, yeah. No, that was my first time <laughs> camp. Fun. Yeah, yeah it was it. fun. And Erin yeah. went on that one too. So, yeah, she did. To meet everybody. Yeah, yep. that was you. You were there with Aaron. Well, yeah, Wendy's, and Wendy's, Wendy's in the legislature. What? Wendy's in the legislature. Maybe she, but Wendy's in the legislature. Maybe she could put a bill in to ban camping in the rain. Uh, well, that would be a great. Well, we didn't know it was going to rain. <laughs> we and had we, to walk it so far out. We had no idea, but oh, it was. Everybody just had a wonderful. Yeah, day. yeah. Oh, yeah. And we didn't know that location was going to be that dense. Hard it was. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of fun. It's really. Yeah. Oh boy! Oh boy! And Nothing. Creative and cooks and Danielle. Mm. Um, you know, takes the younger kids because yeah, I had a, I yeah, and crafts and oh, we went swimming. It's really I hope we couldn't do it last year because of COVID, but I'm really hoping we get to. Do yeah, it. my friend, I was telling her I talked to one of our friends Susan just recently, and we said when this whole thing's over, all the girls need to get together, and we're gonna go to a bar and just grab a drink and yeah. catch up. It, we said we said we try to find a place for karaoke. I, <laughs> we fit, we said maybe we can get so, more people um, get some drinks in them. <laughs> Two minutes. So what about what are you still left to get done? You want to maybe get married? Have you ever so, thought about getting married? What do you think about that? Um, it's funny you say that. I actually have no interest in boys. My interest right now is mainly my job. I am married. I always tell people I'm married to my job right now. And if I do anything in the oh, future, I might consider adopting a little girl or boy. That would be my, where I'd go probably with okay. that. I just, I have no interest That's in boys. Good. I just, I've seen relationships with other people and I feel like it's just, it just is, it's not worth the aggravation. A lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Danielle. <laughs> I prefer being single. It's way more fun. <laughs> Marriage is highly overrated. Not oh, worth the aggravation. Oh boy, you nailed that one. You nailed that one, Danielle. Marriage is just highly <laughs> overrated. You concentrate on you. But you did yeah. go on oh, God. one time and you realized it wasn't for you. I love it. I love it. We have we have one minute. We have to okay. we got about a minute to go. That's great. Yeah. 
Yeah, you're amazing. I'm so glad that you're on. Oh, so, any goals left? One minute. Any big goal you want to still out there for you? Some um, job? Not too much what, a big goal. Something oh. you want to do? No, but I don't want to thank. If I have some people I got to thank, obviously. I got to thank my okay. boss, Steph. I got to thank my boss, Stephanie um, Sturgis, for actually looking past the fact that I have a disability and hiring me to work at that child kiss at Kindercare because there's a lot of employees who would have heard that I have a disability and would have said, no, too much of a risk. Um, my, obviously my therapist friend Gagney was awesome. I owe her great thanks. Um, and then my parents, I, owe, I mean, you know, I wouldn't be where I am today without them. Yeah. Yeah. That's we, we need to wrap it up. All right. I've loved this show. Thank you for coming, Danielle. You're and welcome. Wendy, anytime. Thank you, for thank you yeah. Danielle. Great. Wendy, welcome. thank you for connecting oh. us with oh. it, Danielle. Yeah. My pleasure. And Danielle, as you um, start fin you know, doing more things, please let us know. And then uh, we'd love to have you come back. Again. Oh, absolutely. And anytime. And if, you, day and and time if you change your better. mind. I will be there. And if you change your mind about the marriage thing, you want to get invited to your wedding. If you do change your yeah. mind about the wedding. Absolutely, yeah. yes. I but I would come, like, you know? so blue is actually, so the reason I'm wearing blue, that's the autism color, just so everybody knows. Oh, well, no, That's why I have my blue on today, because the color for autism is blue. Blue. Well, I know that Pamela would have loved to have met you. So. Oh, yeah. Fly. If you cannot fly, if you cannot fly, I will lift you up and tell you that I love you. If you cannot fly, if you cannot fly, if you cannot fly, I will lift you up and tell you that I love you. As we travel through this life, there is trouble, there is strife, and some days seem dreary and so long. But with courage on our side, there's no need to run and hide. We can lift our wings and learn to fly. If you cannot fly, if you cannot fly, if you cannot fly, I will lift you up and tell you that I love you. If you cannot fly, if you cannot fly, if you cannot fly, I will lift you up and tell you that I love you. Now today may not seem bright, cause we cannot see the light, and there's thick black darkness all around we can soar up to the clouds and ignore the angry crowds we must lift our wings and learn to fly if you cannot fly if you cannot fly if you cannot fly i will lift you up and tell you that i love you Fly. If you cannot fly, if you cannot fly, I will lift you up and tell you that I love you. And if fate will be our friend, there'll be peace around the bend. No more tears for us to cry. If you cannot fly, if you cannot fly, if you cannot fly, I will lift you up and tell you that I love you. If you cannot fly, if you cannot fly, if you cannot fly, I will lift you up and tell you that I love you. I will lift you up and tell you that I love you.